A plethora of prominent leaders on the left have seemingly found themselves in, an, in a very interesting conundrum surrounding the subject of force the vote. Um, if you haven't seen the hashtag, I don't know how, if you're really um, at least somewhat um, divulged in these leftist circles on social media and whatnot. So just to give you a quick rundown, I think I touched on it in a um, in an earlier video at some point, but it's basically uh, Jimmy Dore came out with this idea that uh, the progressives in Congress should withhold their vote for Nancy Pelosi until she brings a uh, until she brings Medicare Medicare to the floor Medicare to the floor Medicare for all to the floor uh, for a vote, and so. It's, it's gotten quite a bit of traction because people are still talking about it, which shows you how big of an issue this really is. You know, uh, a lot of people think that, um, <clears throat> may or maybe previously would have thought that this would have been, you know, one day, two day kind of thing, but it's been going on for quite some time now. And so AOC has kind of been at the center uh, of a lot of the criticism from the side of the people that would like to force the vote. And the reason for this is it's not necessarily because she's being pressured, um, just her solely being pressured, but she pretty much stuck her neck out on social media. She's very active on social media. She has 10 million followers, uh, Twitter followers, and she, uh, she stuck her neck out and basically got, you know, upended in the uh, war of ideas, if you will when talking about forcing the vote. Um, I would say that Justin Jackson, Jimmy Dore, and everybody else that's for it did a relatively good job in standing their ground and really kind of debunking her points when she came out saying why that's not a good idea. And so she's taken a, a, a heap of the criticism and all the other progressives and Justice Democrats, Ilhan Omar, <clears throat> um, Rashid Tlaib, Rokana, anybody else you name it, have been not relatively, but pretty much completely silent on this idea. I would guess because they saw the reaction that uh, AOC got when she came out um, against it. And I'm sure that they are probably against it as well. And they don't want to incite the raft of the political left online either. So it makes for a very interesting situation because there's a lot of different talks and people are saying different things. But the one that bothers me the most and what this video is mainly about is the subject of criticizing your political leaders is somehow now seen or looked at as if you're attacking them. Let me rephrase that better. So asking your political leaders to do more for you, which is what they said they would do, which is how they got elected, i.e. AOC and others, is somehow being anti-AOC or anti-Justice Democrats or anti-progressive or, you know, you're for anarchy or, or whatever. You're just, excuse me, you're attacking your political leaders and it's unwarranted. Calling on your political leaders to fight for you is never unwarranted, especially when they're not doing so, or at least you perceive them as such. Political leaders are there to do, to do just that, to fight for you and implement the change that their base wants, the people that elected them want. That's why they got elected, right? But for some reason, there's this reaction from the people that are against force the vote um, and they're saying that, oh, these people are anti AOC or anti Justice Democrats or whatever. So it makes for a very interesting conversation. You know, what this reminds me of is how the corporate Democrats, the neoliberals of the world, the centrists, they always say, you know, civility and decorum. You know, this isn't how you do it, right? And we'll get into how you do it in a second in regards to force the vote, because a lot of people say, oh, this isn't the time. We'll get into that in just a second. But, you know, it's always civility and decorum with the corporate Democrats. And that kind of seems like what it is now. You know, this isn't how you do it. Like, I remember when AOC was kind of responding to why she didn't support uh, force the vote or why she was skeptical of it or whatever you want to phrase it as. One of the reasons uh, I listen 
uh, to uh, her say this in an interview, she was like, oh, well, it's going to do this and that and it's going to get negative coverage from the media. Why is that one of your concerns? Negative coverage from the media. I don't I don't really understand why that's something that you're worried about. You don't we're not here to be liked. We don't have to be liked. You know, we don't have to be looked at as the most upstanding group of individuals. As long as we get our policies implemented and we get the change that we want, I don't think it really matters what public opinion is of us. Go ask people what they thought about the Tea Party. Go ask some of the politicians who were forced, basically, to step down what they thought about the Tea Party. They hated him. They hated him. John McCain, uh, a guy ran against John McCain with the further uh, right position than him on something. And John McCain freaked out and went further right as a, as a result of that. And, of course, as you know, with the Tea Party, they shifted the Overton window to the right. Right. And of course, the Democrats followed not too far behind. And we can do the same thing on the left, but you have to be willing to fight for it. And you need a spine. And you need a backbone. And you can't be afraid. Nancy Pelosi has a 21 percent approval rating. Congress as a whole has a 13 percent approval rating. There's nothing that should scare you. There's nothing that you should be frightened of. When picking a fight with these people, you only have everything to gain. You have nothing to lose. And then they say, oh, well, we'll lose for no reason. And, you know, the floor vote won't matter. The Tea Party, they went at Obamacare like 50 times. <laughs> they tried to repeal it like 50 times over, over that. Did they care about losses when they wanted to get what they wanted? They didn't. They didn't. You know, and there's there's many different arguments for this. Um, you know, if you go back to the 1800s, 1700s, whenever, however far you want to go back when slavery was still a thing. If you told people when slavery was going on, oh, you know what? Yeah, you're right. The slavery thing, it isn't too good. But now it's just not the time. We don't have the votes. We don't have the votes right now. What are we going to do? We have the votes. Would you have said that back then? Like now we look at that as if, what? That sounds completely idiotic. Well, it's the same thing here. I would equate, you know, an issue like universal health care on the same level of magnitude as those, the issues of, you know, slavery, voting rights, etc. I I honestly would, you know, and asking your politicians, and that's what it is, we're asking, you know, Asking your politicians to support things like this isn't attacking them. That's not being anti, insert whatever name. It's not being anti AOC or anti whoever. We just want them to show us that they are on our side for this. And if you disagree with uh, the force to vote terminology, well, then tell us what your position is. One thing I've noticed is that people don't do that. You know, I saw a guy, well, before I say that, I saw a tweet that said that if AOC was the one that proposed force the vote and not Jimmy Dore, I wonder if everybody else that uh, currently doesn't support it would still not be in support of it. And that's very interesting because I actually saw, I was watching uh, a, a leftist um uh, a leftist political commentator, and he was saying something to the effect of, you know, I don't agree with, uh, you know, the force to vote. I just don't, you know, I don't think the strategy is correct. But, you know, if, if AOC proposed it, then, yeah, I would support it. But I just don't think now, the, I just don't think right now it's the time. What? <laughs> that made absolutely no sense. But that's how a lot of these people think. And uh, it's honestly quite saddening. And I would just suggest to anybody on the left, you know, any uh, political leader, any political commentator on the left, to just look in the mirror and kind of realize who you are and what you're doing this for. You know, if now isn't the time, when is the time going to come around? Is there a set date that we should start pushing for Medicare for all? 
And if there is a set date, should we not do it the way that we're doing it now? It's actually uh, extremely confusing because we're not going to get these policies implemented by singing Kumbaya and holding hands and asking gracefully. No, we have to do we have to forcefully make this happen. This isn't going to be easy. OK, we have everybody against us, the Republicans, a large portion of the Democrats, the corporate Democrats, the establishment. Nobody wants this to happen except for us. So, you know, the cutting ourselves down. That has to stop and it has to stop immediately. And we have to actually have substantive, su substantive, su substantive and. um you know, uplifting arguments about this. And of course, disagreements can sprout, but we'll work through those disagreements. But simply dismissing something because you don't like the idea of it without even, you know, really analyzing it and coming up with different solutions is quite ridiculous, in my opinion. I saw David Sirota said something uh, to the effect of don't just ask for Medicare for all, ask for other things. I think that's a phenomenal idea. Don't just try to force a floor vote on Medicare for all. Ask for other things, other concessions. That's amazing. You know, but the vast majority of people aren't doing that. You know, they just say that this is stupid. You know, it, it's not going to go anywhere. You know, pie in the sky. And, you know, you should quit it. And Nancy Pelosi, you know, you shouldn't challenge her or whatever. And this isn't going to get anywhere. And that is not the kind of discourse that we need when over 300,000 people have died um, during this pandemic and bodies are continuing to pile up. And right now, this issue is ever so prominent and it's right in the face of the American people. And it's extremely difficult to ignore. Now, when this pandemic's over and things have seemingly gone back to normal, which things are never normal in this country, but people, it'll, it'll be easier to overlook. Fighting for change and requesting that your political leaders show a little spine and a little backbone and support you and fight for you and do what they pledged that they would do when they got in the positions that they are currently in is not attacking them and it's not being against them and it's not being anti, insert the name of whatever political leader, okay? It's simply asking them to do what they said that they would do when they got to the place that they currently are. 